So then they that are in the flesh, that's where they live and breathe and have their counterfeit being. The walking dead says up there, carnally minded is what? Death. You talk about zombies, they're all over the place. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, the old carnal nature. But in the gift, that's lowercase s, in the gift of Holy Spirit. If, and there's always conditions to fulfill, if so be that the Spirit, the gift, lowercase s, I just put a diagonal through these uppercases. That's all private interpretation, as Dr. Earl taught us. You go into that Holy Spirit book and get all these corrected so you're not without even know it, privately interpreting, if you don't get the capitalizations right. Both of these spirits are lowercase. It's referring to the gift, not the giver. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Dwell in you. Dwell is the verb form of house or home. To make yourself at home, that requires effort. That requires activity. That requires thinking and action. So right here we're implying the energizing of the gift. Now if any man have not, lowercase, the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You're not of that family. And if Christ be in you, there's sonship. The body is dead because of sin, the sin nature. But the spirit, lowercase, boy they just butchered this because they didn't know what they were doing with the word panuma. And they had no idea that every truth must fit in the framework of the manifestations. Thank God for Victor Paul Weirwell. They still butcher this, because every time they see what clearly is a gift capitalized, they read the Trinity into it. They read the three troglodyte gods, three-headed monstrous thing they call God into it. And again, if you're going to have more, if you're going to have two gods or three, you might as well have thousands, because you've already violated the first great commandment: Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before thee. From Exodus, Jesus couched it, and Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind and strength. He encapsulated it down to that and love thy neighbor as thyself. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of the sin nature. But the gift, the spirit, is life. Remember the law of the spiritual life from verse 2. Because of righteousness, the God-given ability to stand in the presence of the Heavenly Father without any sense of sin, guilt, or condemnation. You will not find that in the carnal mind. That's hatred against God, not subject to the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. But if the spirit, the gift of him, the Father, God the Father, you also got to get your pronouns correct through here. Else before you know it, you're immersed in Trinitarian sewage in your thinking. But if the Spirit, the gift of him that raised up Jesus, see, God raised him up, the Father, the one God. And notice here it just says Jesus. Tremendous, because when he was in the grave, he was just a dead Jesus. You can't have a dead Jesus Christ. The word Christ contradicts death. He was the man, Jesus, of Nazareth. I suppose you could say Jesus of Nazareth, but it, just to keep it straight, he raised up Jesus. He was dead. No life for three days and three nights. He didn't visit hell like Dante's Inferno teaches and the Roman Catholics accept like a testament greater than the new, Dante's uh, what, what, what's the whole thing called? The human comedy, and part the part most noted is the Inferno, where Dante goes to hell looking for his girlfriend, Beatrice. That does nothing but promotes goddess worship. 
and this bullshit about eternal torment that's the devil's fantasy, not the true God's. And, and then they somehow they send Jesus to hell and say that during this three days and three nights he went to hell for one, some dumb reason, some, some torturous, horrible, horrid motive. They want to send him to this fantasy place, you know. You talk about a graphic novel. You talk about fantasy that has turned into truth in the minds of the deceived. Read Dante's Inferno. That's where all the great Christian, quote into quote, belief in a living hell after death comes from. Not from the Word, but from Dante's Inferno. Let's see. Some maybe from Milton, Paradise Lost, although I don't see that much in him as much as in that idiot genius. He was a genius. 13th century. He wrote, I read a whole book about him. He was brilliant with language and a brilliant Roman Catholic. And he just helped prom promulgate one of the great myths and great fables of our day and time. This would almost be like uh, a couple of thousand years from now, everybody reads Marvel Comics as if that's fact, if, 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 as if that's history. And they believe we had all these super dudes flying around in the air defying human ability for all their strange reasons, doing good and bad. That would be like Marvel's Comics. Couple, If Lord Terry's a couple thousand years ago, that will probably be the way it is. They'll read Marvel Comics like it's... Encyclopedia Britannica, like it's the history, like it's Wikipedia, if that's your great authority today. What a crock of malarkey. But it's great to read the history, then you can track the error. You can track how the spirits manipulated so many bogus, paganistic beliefs into so-called Christian dogma. Let's see. Well, thank God we're the rescued, rescued from ignorance, rescued from stupidity every time you get clear of those idiot images and those intimidations. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Verse 11, but if the Spirit of him that raised up who? Jesus. From the dead. Now watch it. Watch the, dis watch the distinctive detail of the revelation of the written word. Jesus is dead, has to be raised up. From the dead dwell in you. He that raised up, now he's Christ. He's raised up. He's the anointed one. Got that? He's seated at God's right hand. Christ is anointed. Messianic, the Messiah. Now. Look at the accuracy of the word. Jesus, when he's in the grave, has to be raised. The, the, the instant he's raised, he's the anointed. Christ, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Now watch this. Ties it into your life and mine, day by day, if we choose to believe it. Shall. Now the word also is going to come later. So I'll read it as the text should read. Shall quicken or enliven or invigorate. Your mortal bodies also. The word also, properly placed, puts the grand emphasis on your mortal bodies also. What a promise of God on the heels of the distinctiveness of raising up Jesus to be the Christ. And if that's true, that same spirit can energize, activate, give life, to our mortal body, even our contaminated body and soul with impure, corruptible seed can be quickened to life. Talk about a verse on healing. All the healing you ever need is in the believing of the gift of what speaking in tongues can do. You know, the only thing that makes Holy Communion a Holy Communion is that it's being taken by people that are speaking in tongues as they eat the bread and drink the cup. It's a ceremony, and it's a dead ceremony when there's no proper teaching to the people regarding the manifestations of power from on high. 
all the millions and millions of communions taken and all the idiot Roman Catholic, many times adapted by the prophet, the Protestants. Even Martin Luther was still fooled. Even Martin Luther still believed that the bread literally turned into the body of Christ and the wine literally into his blood. I'm not blaming him. It's, it's just the history. He, he, he worked out so many things that the R.C.s had messed up, and he hadn't yet discovered speaking in tongues, so he wanted to keep something supernatural in their public worship services. So he stuck with that, caused all kinds of arguments. Sex broke away. There were Protestant leaders that didn't believe there was any kind of transmutation or transmogrifying or whatever they want to call it, where they convince people that literally they're eating the body of Jesus and literally they're drinking his blood. Eventually, Luther did speak in tongues, and I'd like to think that once he did speak in tongues, perhaps he had time to work himself back through his communion wrong dividing. But I don't hold against him. Love the guy. Without him, be hard-pressed to say we'd have any of the word today. So thankful for him. But just reading some history again this week on the great Martin Luther. But they have to so put the mysterious in their mass. Number one, that for years and centuries they kept it in Latin because they didn't, you know, because the mystery of the Latin language, most people didn't speak it. So it was a cheap imitation of speaking in tongues. That's really what it was. There's those today that still love the Latin mass because it keeps the air of the mysterious in there. It's just a language of men spoken by contaminated people. Why don't you learn how to speak in tongues and you don't have to make up all these damn fairy tales to prove to yourself that there's a supernatural God that really is part of your life. Every truth must fit in the framework of the manifestations. So they have to labor to convince their people that literally this changes to the body and blood of Jesus. Boy, talking to some of our Roman Catholic raised people, they'll tell you how that used to freak them out as a child. What child would want to literally eat somebody's body or drink his blood? Good God Almighty, the stuff the spirit realm has infiltrated. And that belief is so infiltrated, that's one of those ones you could never get them to change their mind on with a crowbar and a sledgehammer. That's right, pouring hot coffee into their brain to caffeinate their bad thinking. you got to quicken your mortal body also. And to me, this is still the foundation of physical healing, is that you believe this verse. And I believe this verse. The foundation of any physical malady starts with energizing the gift and claiming the promise of his invigoration by speaking in tones. Now, if you've got to make other decisions, there's no condemnation. If you still need the healing arts, doggone it, God will show you. And there's the green light. You'll get the best available to your help. That's no less God working in you to heal you. And I'd guarantee you, I'd just keep speaking in tongues even through the holy healing arts process. How about it, as Dr. Orwell would say? What a verse. What a verse in the resonance. See, because all through here, the concept of renouncing, we're renouncing the carnal mind, which is death. We're renouncing the carnal mind, which is hatred against God. We're renouncing the carnal mind's inability to please God. We are renouncing being in the flesh to being in the spirit. We are renouncing the death of sin. We are renouncing the, the infirmity and the weakness of a mortal body when we are invigorated, enlivened by speaking in tongues.